<laughs> and there we go. All right, MMAniacs, it's time once again for your weekly MMA podcast called Split Decision. Take two. Brought to you from the Sin Cal Studios. Bueller, Dodge, and Dennis back together again after the holidays. Aww. Uh, here we are, ready to break you off some MMA news and, of course, break down some fights that are happening this weekend. What about we the real have, big news? Uh, the, and the real, the real big news is... What's the real big news? Dodge is getting married. Dodge is getting married. I don't know if we were breaking that out on the show. I, apparently, we are. Yeah. Someone, someone. Sorry, pro- Eric. I'm off the market. Someone, <laughs> someone proposed. Someone proposed to Dodge. And Salpino will be over here shortly. <laughs> he said he was coming. And they will consummate this thing. <laughs> someone gave Dodge a big rock. <laughs> right in his O ring. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, here we are. It's uh, New Year's weekend, which is awesome. Ryzen just had their big New Year's event, which I'm sure we're going to talk well, oh, about. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I didn't realize it was done already. So we'll get into no, that. No, it's not done. They're still they're still tonight. It's still happening. Right this now. happened. This happened technically today, which was in the future earlier. And then there's going to be another one on the thirtieth. Brazilian is time, tomorrow. really? Yeah, Japanese time. Yeah, it's a two oh, day. Oh, I think it was a two day event. Two day event. What is uh, happening? I don't know. <laughs> is it Japanese or Brazilian Japanese time? He's moving stuff. <laughs> it's both. Oh, forgot to plug this in. Sorry. Brazilian. Dennis, Dennis can't see things. It's Brazilian no Australian time. Oh my God! It's like a black hole. Are we time. even having a show today? Are this we? This is our show. You know what did happen though? <laughs> MMA Christmas. Oh, yeah. As a Christmas gift to us, if you haven't voted yet. Yes, go vote at mymmanews.com. You. you can vote split decision for fan favorite podcast of the year, or is it best podcast of the year now? I mean, he's just podcast of the podcast year. Podcast of the year. Go just ahead the best whatever. Don't worry about it. Mymmanews.com. We're the best around. We're trying to get that official title of My MMA News podcast. Podcast of the year, yes. <laughs> we want to be their, their top ranked. One, uh, but Even yeah. Though apparently, somebody keeps talking shit about us, but whatever. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. Oh, that's uh, a lot of what? MMA. A lot of MMA fighters celebrated. Keep saying someone keeps talking shit because we're in the lead. It's not us. We're not a promotion. Whatever. We're. It's all about. We're us. not even promotable. It's we're a all fighter. about us. <laughs> <laughs> we are the center of the universe. Stop talking shit. We're winning. Deal with it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> moving on so, from there. Moving on from there, we had uh, obviously a lot of MMA fighters celebrated the holidays. We have a bunch of little pictures here to check out. We got a uh, a Wonder Boy up here and his family. A lot of matching PJs. I mean, I I also took part in the matching PJs picture thing. So lots of I like I like the family photo matching PJs. My favorite part right of here. Boom! Gotcha. gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta hit both of you. And that one's, see, that one's legal because it's below the waist. Below all the waist. Are, yeah. Yeah. You all can't be like, hey. No, that doesn't count. Well, yeah. Oh my God! You could see her. I want to know. We got Ariane Celeste. Can we, can we real quick? Can we discuss why this is even coming back all of a sudden That's, in 2017? Because like, everything just everything comes, comes back. back. There's no original ideas anymore. No. <laughs> it's just had a huge explosion, like high school. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> Ariane Celeste getting very festive there. Awesome. Uh, festive, there we go. I like Brittany that. Brittany Palmer also getting a little dressed up for the holidays. I like her ornaments. <laughs> getting a little undressed for the holidays. <laughs> anybody, uh, Donald anybody? Cerrone said this is how we do Christmas. Went hunting with his boys. I was going to say, anybody stuffed Merry Christmas, stocking? Ducks. No. You die. <laughs> <laughs> you get buckshot for Christmas. Uh, Cody <laughs> Nolove is in Thailand with his uh, wife and uh, the... Woman of, that's having his child, right? They're mad. They're both pregnant. of them pregnant, yeah. His wife and the woman. And, okay, his child. quick room poll is this the kiss of death? So, this is his new tattoo because he's having a baby, or the no, tattoo? No, 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 this no. is his new tattoo, and that's his old lady's face. That's his old lady's face. Oh, yeah, you're done. Yeah, kiss you, of death. You don't ever, you're done. No names, no faces. Right. No names, no faces. Even if you get it in a different language, I found out it still doesn't <laughs> <laughs> does not save you from the kiss of death. You're done. Uh, Conor McGregor and his matchy PJs. Are they, does it match Wonder Boy? I, I gotta take hats off to Photoshop, Steve. People sent this picture to him. He goes, "I'm not touching it. It's Christmas." <laughs> and it's gonna, <laughs> but that's okay because as shopped as it gets, did. <laughs> and if you can find it, look for it. As shopped as it gets, got some really good pictures of this. I just want to see one with him and his baby's head switched. No, it's all. not his head switched. They got it where the baby is Dana. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. Mackenzie Dern. Showing off some uh, holiday spirit. Her there. recreational clothes, apparently. <laughs> uh, you got Amanda Nunes and her girlfriend, uh, Nina Astonaroff. Nice. Both fighters in the UFC. Oh, I thought that was one of the Diaz brothers. Wow. <laughs> Good old Randy Couture. Looking oh, up. Andy Cortez. Very for festive there. That's not just Dana with the 5 o'clock. I don't you know, understand you do why, know why he don't smile, right? Luke, yeah. yeah. Luke Rockhold's got Santa sitting on his lap. It's very strange. Because he, Cause he grabs the tiger by the balls. <laughs> he grabs Santa by the jingle bells. <laughs> Someone gave Sage Northcutt throwing uh, axes for Christmas. He was showing those off in his Instagram. Somebody should give him lawn darts. <laughs> he, he better be dragon shot. <laughs> he needs to be dragon shot before he throws Hey, them. I'm going to drag in something across your forehead. <laughs> Still dragging my nuts across your forehead. <laughs> and I like the, you know, little heartwarming 
story here. Ty Tyrone Woodley bought his mom a house, Aww. which was awesome. Yeah. He said it, he made that promise when he was 10. Yeah, when he's 10 years old, he made that promise 25 years later. Let's see, he's probably making 3 or $4 million. He's on TV, and he bought a $100,000 house. Right, right on, Woody. Hey, whatever. <laughs> it's a house. At least it's a house. I moved my mom hey, into Hey, there's a, homeless people that can't make their mortgages, Josh. I, I moved my mom into a one-bedroom apartment. Do I get a pat on the back for that? Can I get an attaboy? Thank I you. I stole that from oh. SNL. <laughs> <laughs> Moving I'm on, patting you on the back if you're choking on food. <laughs> Moving on, Bellator and their new and home. Then that's a maybe. The Paramount Network has decided to split ways with Jimmy Smith. Oh, that's right. I heard about this. No, yeah. everybody started saying you never see Jimmy Smith and Joe Rogan in the same room. Yeah, the gig was up. See this? See, yeah, this is great. That says after a long and successful relationship, well, Jimmy the same thing? Yeah. <laughs> virtually identical. <laughs> Jimmy Smith and Belter have mutually agreed to part ways. Brought to you by Bud Light. Jimmy is one of the finest combat sports announcers of our time. He has played an integral role in the growth of Bellator and he's evolved into a successful global franchise it is today. So they're putting Goldie on full time then? I don't know. Quote from Jimmy Smith says, I'm very grateful for the entire Bellator organization and the fans. An amazing and unforgettable nine years. As I move on to the next phase of my career, I want to wish all the fighters, producers, and Bellator staff the absolute best. The new on air team will be announced shortly, according to Bellator. How many of these people, when they make these statements, really just want to say, suck my dick? Goldie and Boss? <laughs> well, no, because they're, they're saying that the UFC is in talks with Jimmy. Really? Because, yeah, Joe's going. Uh, is he? Yeah, I think he, I think he will. I think he will. He's had his run. He's had his. Fun. I think they'd go with Brian Callahan before they go with Jimmy no, Smith. Joe's going to announce for Zufa Boxing. <laughs> no, Joe's <laughs> done. Joe's w podcast e is big enough now. Then his comedy shows are doing so well. I think he's done with the traveling with the uh, the UFC and having to book his shows based on the UFC. Yeah, so you wouldn't have to travel when all your boxing shows are in Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> so the Ryzen twenty seven. Is that a huge butt back there? Oh, yeah, we'll get to that. <laughs> Actually, you see the this is what the poster is behind them. Yeah, no, it's his shoulder, but it yeah. looks like a giant ass. It looks like a giant. Yeah. So the the Ryzen I thought it was a commercial for Beef Eater. Uh, Grand Prix <laughs> Bantamweight Grand Prix is gym. off. Uh, we have the the first round happened early early this no, the morning. Male porn magazine. This, oh, that uh, was part of the Grand Prix? <laughs> yeah, that was part of the Grand Prix. Uh, and we had a couple things happen yesterday. Hot dogs monthly. Was it yesterday or the day before in the weigh-ins? Yesterday. A Japanese time? I don't know, man. I don't know how that works. <laughs> I don't even know what I was doing. I got to wear like and seven of course, watches just to keep so you know, shit. Uh, the whole thing is, is sponsored by Cup of Noodles, so Cup of Noodles Man was back again, which was amazing. Cup of Noodles, who is 1-0 against CM Punk. <laughs> I, want, I want Cup of Noodles to be in a fighting game at some point it in the near to future. Be. has to be in the Ryzen <laughs> fighting game that they're going to release. It has to be. Um, but we did have Gabby Garcia came in and missed weight by 26 pounds. I'm calling such horseshit on this. Which Minor. I don't understand because it was an open weight fight. How can you miss weight on an open weight fight? Because apparently it's open weight up to 209 pounds. That's that was the rules. I didn't hear that. that so was, she came in at two thirty eight. That, that was supposedly the rules. As she came in so, twenty seven pounds overweight. Shinobi uh, Kandori. Uh, I'm not surprised. Uh, I thought, I thought oh, that I'm was, surprised. Thought that was Jack Black from Tropic Thunder. <laughs> Shinobi Kandori was very upset. Uh, said this is a disgrace. Walked off the the set there after weighing in. Now you've been doing a little research on this, I, and, this, I, and yeah, I've yeah. I've actually seen uh, I've actually watched a lot of Japanese. Uh, pro wrestling before, so I kind of so get. Glad you said he, pro wrestling. He's yeah. gonna say porn. Uh, <laughs> both. Yeah. So when, when you when you actually I like made, pixels. When you made this comment, it actually made a lot of sense. That it was that it seemed like pro wrestling. Yes, and it, especially with their altercation backstage. Yes, the way that she calls out Gabby Garcia. G Gabby Garcia, if you know you're coming in 26 pounds overweight, you don't just walk up to the scale like here to fight. And then when all the controversy is happening around you, you, just stand there like I don't know what's going on. <laughs> No but clue. again, like I'm saying, it's it's a very uh, very common story uh, that gets played out throughout Japanese pro wrestling, where you know you have the big foreign invader come in, the legend tries to defeat them. Uh, you know, there's all these things in their way, despite the weight. Like if they would have just said this is a pro wrestling fight with MMA rules, I think more people would be accepting yeah. of the whole thing. But yeah. then and they've done those before. Yeah, but then they didn't have the fight. Well, no, yeah, we'll get because to that here in a second. They're going to. They're going to build it up even more. They're going to build it up even more. But what they're saying is, is that. In pro, like I said, if people would have said, oh, this is a pro wrestling fight with MMA rules, like which Japan has done before, has a long history of doing, mm -hmm. I think people would have been fine. But the fact that they keep pushing it off as an actual MMA bout, the rest of the MMA community is like, okay, we know it's Japan and a freak show, but what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> what and is like, really so, happening? It's the, here's the thing, too, is it like Gabby Garcia gets on the scale, right? And she's ready and the numbers come up. And they could say whatever they want because 
Gabby Garcia doesn't speak Japanese, yeah. so they can shout off whatever fucking numbers they want. I don't speak Japanese either. I have no idea what they said. I do know it's something along the lines of, well, we can't let this fight happen. It's a disgrace. Yeah, it's blah, a blah, disgrace. Blah. Like, it was okay when she was 50 pounds heavier than her opponent. <laughs> 75. I just thought about <laughs> it, dude. That's I could be the it. English interpreter, like that sign language interpreter. <laughs> and just make shit up. Yes. Just, and just sit in the white box and be like, yeah. man, these motherfuckers don't know yeah. shit. <laughs> <laughs> right now, she's saying, man, also, I should have had that, that hoagie for lunch. Also, at the weigh-ins. They love Togo's uh, Taco Bell. (laughs) And they can't wait to get to a California taco truck. Also at the weigh-ins, we had Manel Nape uh, smack Ian McCall in the back of the head. This is so bizarre. Oh, and then he... Which Ian McCall then turns around and smacks him in the face. That's a punch. He said it was open-handed. It was open-handed. It was definitely open-handed. He said it was open-handed. But, like, like Ian McCall is bent over, and when he goes to stand back up, he's got a smile on his face. Yeah, he's laughing. laughing. He's been laughing now at all the the trash that Michael Nave's been talking. And then he he gets smacked in the back of the head, and then he smacks the other dude across the mouth. And they're all disrespectful Americans. They separated them. Um, So let's go into the actual event that's that's happened uh, today. Can I I just say that we may, in a couple of weeks, have an exclusive with Gabby Garcia, too. I'm working on it. It's possible. It's possible. Joey's I've got some, got some positive re- results so far. So, yeah, really? uh, yeah, Gabby Garcia went out to the ring, uh, apologized to all the Japanese fans, begged for forgiveness, and said, you know what? And this with the altercation backstage screams more pro wrestling. I am a woman. I was having trouble cutting weight because I'm also on my period. I also was getting bloody noses. Pretty sure Cyborg said that once before. Uh, I was getting bloody noses while working out because no, 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 I no. could not drop any more weight. My health is more important than anything else. Goes to the ring again on her knees, uh, you know. Because the fans, was it the fans demanded her to come back and apologize? Yeah. More? But she's known but then about they, this then fight they, for two months. Then, they, known about this fight then the fans said, we want you to still fight. They demanded that she comes back and fights again. Yeah, because it's fucking pro wrestling. <laughs> this is bullshit. I and can it, see she's a fine wrestler. <laughs> this is pro wrestling. And it's like, whether whether. But if not, they just let it be pro wrestling, it'd be fine. Everybody would be okay with it. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. But the fact that they keep trying to trope it out there that it's MMA, it's actual MMA, is what everyone's well. That's why about. I almost I almost feel like maybe Gabby isn't one hundred percent in uh, in the know on it. She doesn't know. Like, oh, well, yeah. oh okay, so 100%. like she's not in on what's happening. Like, Correct. Not, not one hundred percent. She knows she's there to fight. Yeah, but she doesn't understand that it's. It's not a real fight. That's why, like, in her last fight when she fought the 45 year old former pro wrestler, and Uh that woman comes out and does the whole pro wrestling thing. Yeah, starts going off the ropes. Bouncing off the ropes and stuff, like like they would do if it was Ric Flair or something. And Gabby was like, No, see, this is the the, the George thing. She's so George, we can't believe she's in on it, but she's in on it. She's I think she's I think she's ninety eight percent in on it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, we, yeah! got, we got nipples in the studio now. There you go, Salpino at the window. <laughs> I was thinking cupcakes, that's all I see. <laughs> <laughs> so, urinal cakes. Oh, urinal oh, cakes. Urinal cakes. <laughs> <laughs> so we can get into the Ian McCall fight. Ian McCall fought Man L Nape. And uh I don't know. I, Ian McCall has the worst luck in MMA, hands down. Because Ian McCall had his face raked across the ropes, like old school pro wrestling style, ends up with a cut across his forehead and bleeds. They had to stop the fight because of the blood. But look, they he's still he smiling taking... for that shot. Look, 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 at, the, look at the cheesy smile. Who raked his forehead across the... Uh, he kind of did himself. And then uh, Manuel Nate hit him with a knee. So Doesn't he know that's where they hide razor blades? That's, so that's what they're going. They're going full fucking pro wrestling and rising. <laughs> they're just not telling anybody. They're that's just what's not happening telling here. anybody. Brought to you so, by Beachwalkers. Manuel Nate, Manuel Cape. Uh, okay, this ends is up, in Japan. Why are they in English? Not everything. It's uh, English. Manuel Manuel Cape <laughs> ends up getting Racist. the win and moving on in the Grand Prix. TKO Dr. Stop. Such bullshit. They are pro wrestling. Kyoji Horiguchi also gets a win. TKO in the first round up against Gabriel Oliveira. He moves on. Also, uh, Shintaro Ishiwatari over Kevin Patishi and uh, Takifumi Atakasaka over Khalid Talala. This guy talks like he runs a sushi restaurant. (laughs) I'm I'm just calling complete bullshit on all of that. And by the way, I did notice something when I was looking up. Cindy Danawise gets her win over Rini Amira. That's another name we might recognize. I just wanted to be honest. When I was looking up the Gabby Garcia stuff, I just Uh happened to be clicking through profiles of Ian McCall and things like that. And I Uh think that it's funny that people, and I can't remember what website I was on, if I was on Wiki or Tapology or what, but it was Disclosed Earnings. And if there are people that have only fought in Ryzen, it's zero dollars. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Just throwing that out there. <laughs> uh, well, that's disclosed, though. So it's, it's not, 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 not briefcase it has, money. It has, it's not briefcase yeah. money. Because <laughs> we even know in Bellator that you have disclosed money and then you have money that somehow zero, makes it to your house. Zero dollars. Yeah. None of them make any money. 
You sure? Oh, it's all zero. Yeah, well, they, but there's like, you get a briefcase for every 10 grand, so there's like a stack of briefcases next to it. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then zero dollars. <laughs> all right. Um, Ryzen is having their Jiu Jitsu Open tournament right now, and then tomorrow we will have the second and final of the Bantamweight Grand Prix, as well as uh, the rest of the Women's Super Atomweight Grand Prix. All right. Uh, so lots going on. Mirko Krokop will also fight uh, Tayushi Kosaka in a heavyweight bout. Uh, Gomi's going up against Yusuke Yachi. Uh, a lot of stuff going on there in uh, Ryzen. So check that out. I think if you go to Miami Amazing Weeks, they do have a link where you can purchase or or watch the the fights. Cool. Yeah, so busy busy weekend for them. I, I really hope that we can get to the bottom of the whole Gabby Garcia thing. Because, and it, didn't get to bring this up, I remember looking at her weight a while ago, and it had her at 197 pounds. This is a couple months ago. Mm-hmm. And then, like, the second this scandal broke, her wiki had her at uh, uh, 236, like, immediately Ooh. or something like that. And then I found an old article that said that when she weighed in for a fight, she weighed in at 244 at one point in time in her career. Wow. So I have... I That's have, a lot of... When she did yeah. the, the total strip down, remember when she was doing that whole... When she looked like kind of like a skeleton? Didn't she get down, like, 160-something? No. Nah, I've only seen her as low as 197. Yeah, okay. 190 is, I think, the round. Yeah, somewhere in around there. Because she's, what, 6'3"? 6'2". 6'2". 6'2". I've been looking up. Uh, speaking of the Garcia's well, because I mean, I mean, uh, like a lot of people say, Tito Ortiz fights at two hundred five. He walks around two thirty five, and she dwarfs him. Oh, really? Yeah. Mm. Interesting. Speaking of freak show fights, uh, we got a little more news on the gender wars oh, MMA sweet. from Russia. Are, okay. Uh, are we Shannon, are we serious? Are we taking this serious? I do not take any of this serious at all. First of all, they more, finally- more serious than Ryzen. No, less serious than Ryzen. <laughs> I would rather uh, have Cup of Noodles Man at my fight than anything that's going on with gender. Hell yeah! Uh, Is it Ross one? Trent? Ross Trent? Is that who's fighting? <laughs> <laughs> well, we got we got yeah! Tess, ah! we got Tess Barrel, who's the woman who's been announced. She yeah. is going against. Trent. That is all we have on the poster. Trent. And he, looks, Trent. He, and, looks, and, he, and he has sunglasses on. He looks he's got like sunglasses, a Trent. a backwards hat, and a gray wife beater. Because he doesn't want anybody to know who he is. <laughs> That's why he only has one name. If you've you ever rode in a cab him. in New York, you know who Trent is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll fight a chick. Come on. Go ahead. Yeah, send me to Russia. Give me a break. Send me over to Russia. Give me is. some. Well, what? Are you what, serious? They don't do a briefcase, though. They do like a gym bag full of cash over <laughs> in Russia. Fuck that. Give me a gym bag full of cash. I'll go beat her up. Come on. Just don't, don't put my name up oh, there. Does she drive for Uber? Yeah, she's going down. I don't want my mother to also, see it, though. Also on this card, we also know Wes Sims, who uh, they made sure they put this up real big, too, being cornered by Mark Coleman. Uh, we'll be fighting Travis Wolf. That's a draw. I pay uh, to see cornermen all the time. And then uh, you have Shannon Rich, who is, uh, yeah, has 200. that's 200- a whole other thing that you go to watch. Did you, yeah, well, didn't you see him work that, that corner? corner? That's in the middle of the wall. <laughs> Shannon Rich has 226 MMA fights uh, currently. <laughs> That's he's, not the most, though. He, no, that's not the most. He's no. going. He's going for two hundred and twenty-seven. He is willing to bet uh, his fifty k if they beat him. His show money. He'll pay. He's wagering his show money on himself. On himself against his opponent. He will give the the money to his opponent if he loses. Interesting. All right. Only. All right. So uh, yeah, and he's going up against Jerry My- Mears. My- Myers. From everything I found, this guy's a pro wrestler who thinks he's an MMA fighter who's never fought in MMA. All right. This is so, going to be a great pay per view. How yeah. much is it? Seven ninety nine. I think so. Do you have to pay it in rupees? <laughs> <laughs> that is not a crack at Russians at all. <laughs> in no way. Are they even paying rupees? <clears throat> Bitcoin. <laughs> uh, moving I'd like on. To thank the Russians for promoting this type of fight. They're not. They're Americans. <laughs> like they thank the Russians for housing this kind of there fight. You there go. you go. Thank you for Russia for opening one of your empty warehouses for us right. to have this fight in. I would also like to thank Russia for bears <laughs> and cold weather. I, I thank them for vodka. And vodka. I the bears were from Chicago. <laughs> Originally from Russia. Okay. Both bears and yeah. cubs. They came over by way of Siberia. There's a lot of Assyrians in Chicago. Huh? Uh Moving on to some news here. Nate Marquardt. <laughs> What's their baseball team? Nate Marquardt has decided to hang up the gloves and retire. I thought he retired two weeks ago, so. <laughs> I'm serious. I thought we I thought, honestly thought we announced this two weeks ago. Thought we already announced yeah. Nate Marquardt hanging it up. I think we talked about how he might be might, hanging him up after, after him his up. last loss. Yeah. Um, hey, Nate, Nate the Great, been a part of the sport for a long time, been an amazing part of the sport. So, yep. you know. He says he was, he's happy to say he'd still be involved in MMA on, on many levels. I will continue training all aspects of MMA, continue to run my sports ministry, Resurrection, Resurrection Jiu Jitsu. I'm currently pursuing a degree in the Gateway Seminary. Uh, I plan to use my experience from the MMA or from MMA and UFC on a mission field. 
Uh, I am praying for the direction where God is leading us globally. And by that means, wherever we go, I go, God will go, and MMA will go. Jesus didn't tap. Do yeah, you remember that? I do brand? remember that. Yep. Man. <laughs> it was a brand. <laughs> it was a brand. He never tapped out. <laughs> I mean, he couldn't. But that's the no, no, no. point. Oh, now they're, you're gonna, they're big thing. <laughs> gonna go you ask guys about that who actually started that brand, and like he could have verbally tapped. He could, that's right. I remember that, that was their big argument because everyone brought up, well, he couldn't tap, and he said, well, no, he could have verbally tapped. He could have verbally. That was that was their. I think big you guys thing. nailed it. Owali Bangbus. Oh no, Bangbus is no longer on the UFC roster. The Bangbus. I don't even think he's on this planet anymore. His nickname was the Holy War Angel. Um, he posted this tweet that says, so it's official. I'm no longer a part of the UFC organization. Not going to lie. I fell out of love for it for obvious reasons. One being target for unfair treatment multiple times. And second, the organization not taking care of its fighters financially. Dana White, fuck you. MMA comeback. But he was released first, right? Isn't this what we found yeah, out? Yeah, he was released. He was released because... But he, he's making it sound like he left. He was on a three-fight skid. I broke up with her. <laughs> <laughs> we were on a break. <laughs> he was on a three-fight skid. That's a break. Yeah. That's a break. So uh, <laughs> he then goes on and says, um, some MMA fans are the worst human beings alive. I would rather die than compete for their entertainment. I want to compete at my best and for respect and loyal fans only who are true to the martial arts, not scumbag fans who enjoy our pain and boo strategy. You the fuck do you think people watch for? <laughs> you don't think we watch to watch somebody get hurt to get knocked out? He says... You think we're watching just for like a... F dude, for if you we fans, were just watching like some friendly exchange, we'd watch boxing. Dude. I, like, I like square dance conference. For you fans <laughs> who have nothing negative to say... You wouldn't last a second in my shoes. Shut the fuck up. My block game's strong, and your opinion doesn't matter to me because you can't judge a life you've never lived. I'd rather hear from my colleagues than scumbag lowlife idiots. Fuck the UFC. I don't know, dog. He's been going on since yeah, come a little harder. December 27th when he <laughs> when he found out he's still tweeting, just nonstop. Anybody that tweets a Wally Bangboos, uh, you will get a response from him. I'm gonna tweet him right now. Yeah. <laughs> He is he is going a little nuts. He's upset also that the UFC apparently photoshopped his photo like this. They changed his lips from here to here, and he's upset about it. He says that that's disrespectful and it messed with his confidence, which then made him lose his next fight. They also lightened up his forehead and made <laughs> one of his ears more full. If he's upset about it, let's at least get real picky about it. They also got rid of three or four acne pock marks, and I think they moved his tattoo. Did they not? Just is that not just a series of multiple pictures, and they picked the one that they wanted to use? Or no, do, is that's it actually, actually photoshopped. We know that for sure. Yeah. No, because in the top picture, he's actually you can hear DMX coming out of his mouth, like, mm. <laughs> and then the bottom one, he's like humming or whistling or. Um, so then he also says that he got robbed of his bonus money uh, in his first fight, which he lost by a TKO to Uriah Hall. Just like so he lost his last one. I don't know what bonus money he's talking about, but he says he got robbed of his bonus <clears throat> money, and thus he was unable to train hard because he couldn't afford to do training and a regular job. That making 40 k a year is not enough for him to leave his other job and, and, uh, and fight full time. So he's upset at the UFC for not giving him a bonus check and not paying him enough. Thus, he was unable to train hard okay. enough to get better and be able to win his so fight. So he wasn't okay. training hard enough because he took so a second he, job. So he yeah. was at least making 40K in the other job because this 40K wasn't enough. So the guy had 80K. Mm -hmm. Still wasn't enough. Still wasn't enough. Not enough. No, so. I can do with 80K. What? We'll talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, I mean, it might, dude, just shut up. Three fights good, bro. Yeah. Three fights good. <laughs> There's no reason to go on a 48-hour Twitter binge for that. 40. I just I did just tweet him. I said hi. You can't get him. You just can't get emotional <laughs> on Twitter. Get a response and just hi. I have still tweeted hi. All right. I had I had that one drunk outrage on Twitter that one day. It didn't it didn't end up well. But we ended up picking up like 15 fans. <laughs> How many did we lose? I don't, I don't. I never know. It was a net gain of three. So it didn't matter. <laughs> but you know, I went back and read it the next day and. Uh, Hey, it was stupid. <laughs> <laughs> That's the problem, though. It's got to be the next day when everything's worn off. 
I really don't even remember getting so en- enraged about <laughs> shit. I don't. And then I was like, oh, wow, we got a lot of uh, reactions. A lot of interactions, was, yeah. Yeah, I was like, oh, oh, damn. I said that? Yeah. I said that. <laughs> yeah, that's, when I, that's why I delete everything on Facebook. <laughs> what happened no, to that? It was gone. Twitter. It was Twitter. So. Yeah. Gone. Everything's gone. Uh, Joanna Zizek. Yeah, I was hacked. I was <laughs> is going to be carrying the Olympic torch to I represent. I sat on my phone weird and took a picture of my dick. I'm sorry. <laughs> and then sent it to somebody else. <laughs> Multiple times. Multiple times. <laughs> I kept getting up, sitting down, getting up, sitting down. <laughs> Joanna Jajetsek is going to carry the Olympic torch to represent Poland at the Korean Winter Games. I think that's awesome, by the way. Do you? I really do. Yeah. It's, it's cool that Poland's, like, recognizing her as an, an amazing athlete, but also recognizing the sport of MMA. I think that's I think that's very yeah. cool, yeah. Uh, well, so with Russia did, being out, there's like 10 or 15 extra miles for people to jump in, right? <laughs> yes. So the games All will take Siberia. place uh, February 9th through 25th. Um, this is again, this is the Winter Games. Uh, she also about, whatever um, joins fellow UFC fighter Antonio Rogero Nogueira, who was the torchbearer back in 2016 when the Brazilian Olympics happened. Oh, cool. So very cool. Good old uh, Winter Olympics. It has curling. Yeah. Getting into the Reebok deal. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I get the broom. Oh. Um, Why is it called Sweetie? Over the holidays, the Reebok decided to uh, change their payouts on their deal a little no, bit. Yeah, about last week. Yeah, we talked about last okay, week. Okay, for the UFC fighters. Oh, yeah. so he, see, he didn't edit I, our show. No, I, I listened to a lot of it and wanted to edit a lot of it. How wrong? <laughs> uh, Aaron Pico already had a fight. He won. He was on his going to be having no, his third had, fight. I caught that. I, I, said, I said he was yeah. coming back. Yep, yep. He said, I said debut, then he corrected me, and I said return. With PFL. NFL, we are waiting for distribution before any announcements will be made. I don't know if we made. can say that or not. You can say that. Okay, well then we're waiting for distribution if you look at any before the, any announcements are made. Any of the PFL uh, websites, it looks like the January dates have been scrubbed from all social media. Mm. However, there's nothing that's been confirmed by the company itself. Gotcha. Uh, but that's they why said, we just said smart math. Everything, says everything is no. going to be into distribution once they talk about who they're going to be uh, joining up with on their deal. That's when uh, they will be able to talk about when the season starts, how many fighters are going to have, who's fighting, all this kind of stuff. Distribution. I think you're right. Fucking dad was listening. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, dad. <laughs> Always. Always. Always watching. <laughs> UFC 219 is uh, tomorrow? It is tomorrow. Hey, it's quickly approaching. Very and quickly. I'm looking forward to this card. It's a, Are you? It's, uh, I think the main Are you going to watch the card? Awesome. I'm not going to be anywhere near a TV, so no. Can you believe how many people are, then like, how are you excited they're for upset it? about I think it? It's a good card. <laughs> they're ups- they're upset. They're like they feel like that they, they, they should have put a better card together. I I don't agree with that at all. No, I, people have been clamoring for Khabib to come back for two fucking years. He's finally back. He made weight. He's pulled out of four fights yeah. in his last six. He's, he's, he's so he's finally gonna fight. Yeah, again. can you believe that too? Uh, uh, was one fifty five point five? Yeah, I thought still barely sure. made weight. He's barely made it. But he did. He only had a happening. quarter of Tamsu. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like, I think it's going to be good. We get to see the return of Khabib, the return of Carlos, you know, Cyborg. Who we did talk to recently. recently. Yeah. If you want to check out our interviews, we did uh, uh, Cynthia Calvillo, uh, as well as Carlos Condit, CCCC. Uh, you can check out both those interviews. Well, I didn't even think about that. Was, when I was uploading them or emailing them, I was like, that's odd. CCC, old that's C's. the old Russia. Yeah. Oh. That's CCCP. CCCP. See? Exactly. There's no P. Anyway, we're kicking off the night on Fight Pass with Tim Elliott taking on Mark De La Rosa. Jumping on to Fox Sports 1 from there with Louis Smolka taking on Matthias Nikolaou. Uh, Marvin Vittori takes on Omari Akhmedov. Miles Jury up against Rick Glenn. I haven't seen Miles Jury in a yeah, while. Yeah, another longtime returner. Yeah, and uh, Khalil Roundtree taking on Michael Old. So which Roundtree <laughs> shows up for this fight? I'll say Roundtree wins this fight because originally he's supposed to fight Gokan Sakai, and I was going to take Gokan Sakai in that fight. So I'll take Roundtree now. <laughs> I'll take Roundtree. I'm going to take Roundtree by leg kicks. Yeah, you know me. i got to go with the Russian. Pronounce Is that name. even Russia? Yep. Are you sure? That's not Polish? I'm Polish. How many consonants are there? I bet, that's, I bet that's Polish. You think so? Yep. I'm still going with him. We're going to be Czech. We're going to put up there. We're going to put we're going to put a side bet on that when he walks out. Does he, does he have the Polish no, flag? No, we can figure it out. You can't click on his name. No, so you we can't. can't. We they have to can't. highlight it. I mean, here, I'll, do look it now. I'll look it up. You do, do, you do your thing. I'll, no, because you're a liar. I don't trust you. Oh, <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, there's that, too. <laughs> Polish <laughs> mixed martial artist right there. There you go. Oh. <laughs> you're a liar. <laughs> 
<laughs> yep, Russian, close his laptop. <laughs> <laughs> Told you. <laughs> Jump it onto That's your... some bullshit thing right there. <laughs> Jump it onto your main card now on the pay-per-view. You got Carlos Condit coming back for his uh, return against Neil Magny. I'm really pulling for Condit here, but I'm worried that... Yeah, he... I don't want to see him just go make coffee the rest of his life. No, no. Uh, in his interview with us, he talked about his love for coffee and that he's never had monkey poop coffee. I love the fucking natural born barista. <laughs> that's that's awesome. And we may have him as a guest on a podcast at one point. I mean, he said he he's more than happy. Yeah, he said he's more than happy yeah. to do that. <laughs> but he said he's got a phone or did. Yeah, definitely phone in. He's not coming to California. Yeah. <laughs> so I got caught in this fight uh, begrudgingly just because he's one of my favorite fighters, and I hate to root against him. But and he's a fellow uh, New Mexican. He's a fellow New Mexican. I'm going Magny. Yeah. It's a tough one to, to to call. I think I think Magny's on a surge right now. Yeah. I've always rooted for Condit. I've always, I think, I've always most of the time picked Condit. He's two years out too, almost. So uh, that's rough. I'll give it to him. I'll take Condit. You're gonna take Condit. Yep. It's rough. Uh, Cynthia Calvillo up against Carlos Esparza. C- Cynthia Calvillo on a like six fight win streak. And many people are saying possible uh, should be fighter of the year. I, can, I agree. That, I mean, having five fights this year. That makes her an amazing athlete. If she wins this fight, I'll give her fighter of the year. If she loses, no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm still taking Carlos Esparza in this one with the I experience. still got Carlos, yeah. Really? Carlos with the experience. Uh, I got Cavillo on and, this one. And the wrestling. Just going to be a lot of takedowns. Yeah, I agree with that. Uh, Dan Hooker takes on Mark Diakis. I got Diakis. Diakis. Hooker. <laughs> just just Yo, hooker. hooker. <laughs> You're a hooker. TJ. <laughs> what? Hooker. <laughs> Khabib Nurmagomedov taking on Edson Barboza. I'm, I'm riding the Khabib train on this one. I Khabib be, train? I'm, I'm going to go on the hype train. Khabib, Khabib takedown train? Yeah. A lot of takedowns. A lot of takedowns. He's wrestling a bear. I'm so, taking Barboza. You? I, I got Khabib. Khabib? I don't want to. And your main... <laughs> I don't want to, but it's happening. No, I pooped from there. Uh, Chris Cyborg, your champ, taking on Holly Holm. Uh, me personally with this fight, I really feel like Chris Cyborg was holding back a lot in her debut in the UFC. I think she wanted to give the fans a show and not just immediately whoop the ass for her opponent in 30 seconds. Tony Evans, though, was a tough broad, man. We talked about that multiple yeah, times. Yeah, but when it, for me, this, me watching She came it, in overweight. Yeah. Uh, Two-week notice. Mm-hmm. She, and, but Chris walked up to her, punched her in the face, and wobbled her immediately. And then was like, oh, shit. I don't want to do that fast. <laughs> I'm just going gonna, gonna to do some tappy-tappy. For a little bit, and then I'll finish here. My this biggest is, thing these, with these are all Joey's view. That's my, fine, yeah. my biggest That's thing with Holly Holm and, and the Chris Cyber for you is that we saw the last time Chris Cyber tried to go up against somebody who is a very strong Muay Thai yeah. fighter this and kickboxer, and which Holly Holm definitely is world championship kickboxer. So when, when Chris Cyber did a Muay Thai fight, she got her ass handed to her. Yep. I mean, she tried, she really did, but she lost badly, and I think. If Holly Holm can do the same thing, use her reach and and stay on the outside, she could definitely win this fight. She was winning that fight against Misha Tate, doing the same thing, picking her apart from the outside, never getting tied up. Yeah. And then by the third, she was like, oh, I got this. It's cool. Hey, why are you clinching me? No. And then I flipped <laughs> over her head and then just lost, and lost really quickly. And I think that's a big problem when you brought that up. You make a solid point because Cyborg, she's she's got jiu-jitsu. She's, she, she does. that, but she doesn't use it. She likes to stand in bed. Yep. And she's it, got power, she, and she bull rushes people. Mm-hmm. And she's not known for going for takedowns no. and that stuff. She has that old school uh, shoot box style, which is yep. go in, yep. rush, yep. throw heavy hands, throw heavy knees. And Holm has the ability to bring that kick up while they're while they're exchanging blows. Yeah, she has the ability to I, bring that. I, kick I, up. I'm going to take. I'm taking home for the upset. I'm really taking am. home for the upset. I'm taking Cyborg. I, I, I mean, obviously, would not surprise me at all if Cyborg wins this I fight. I could go no. 0 for 5 this week. Money, money, my picks, money bet. <laughs> uh, put your money down on home, and you, you can win some some decent money. I'm either going 5 for 5 or over 5. There's going to be no in the middle for this shit. Put it all out there. So, other than these fights right here, and then and then that that's it for the thing. What was what do you think was the biggest upset this year? Oh, well, it depends. If we lose podcast of the year, that would be it. <laughs> <laughs> I, would, I would say that would be the biggest upset of the year. Uh, I, I don't know, man. I mean, I don't think it's a big upset that Conor McGregor didn't defend shit. That's like a, we like all have been calling that from but since he won the belt. But it's still upsetting. It's upsetting. It's still upsetting. Um, oh, God, who just got who, who just got knocked out? Aljamain Sterling? That one, that one upset me a lot. That one upset you personally? <laughs> personally. I didn't think he was going to get knocked, especially that quick. <laughs> it's like he walked out and headbutted the dude's knee and went to sleep. <laughs> Santa's coming. That's what he wanted to get his presents early. You guys know mine. Which one was yours? Oh, Stug Rose. Stug Rose. Yes, Stug Rose. Me, to me, I mean, everybody thought Joanna was, was, on gonna walk was just going to walk through her. Uh, we, we've seen Thug up and down, up yeah. and down. Um, I'm I'm not even real confident she's gonna hold the belt very long, but for this year, 
I, I think that to me that that was the biggest upset, I that, believe. And that was a great accomplishment for her too. Oh, it's a huge accomplishment for looking up the mamas. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> what are you what are you doing? I keep trying to look up the awards and I get the Melon Music Awards. You don't have any? Oh, you're gonna you're gonna see. I was gonna see what kind of things are out there. there. Female fighter, breakthrough uh, fighter, international fighter. Well, for fight some of the, one of the best fights, that guy who just, I go, what is that guy's name? Who just takes him to the face? He just lost recently, but that fight between him and the oh, oh Gaethy, you talking yeah. about Gaethy? Oh, Gaethy. Yeah. oh yeah, I would you say you would say, would say being over Rockhold. I mean, that still happened this year. Uh, yeah, but uh, that yeah, you I think, would say that's you, a pretty big upset. I don't think so. I don't think it's bigger than Thug beating Joanna. I didn't think I didn't think Bisping had a chance really against Rockhold. I don't I think anybody thought to. he had a chance. If Rockhold knew he didn't think he didn't have a chance. That's why he lost. He was like, I just come yeah, in. Yeah, but Rockhold wasn't and coming in. He wants my margarita. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but he oh, wasn't give me the face. He wasn't coming in undefeated. True. You know. Now Gaethy, I would have to give him most probably most tenacious fighter. I mean, unless you're going to go at Alvarez, I'm, I'm who just, of- just as tenacious <laughs> against him. Well, he's also had his ups and downs. I mean, we've only seen Very Gaethy's true. down once this year. And it was way down. <laughs> way down. And how about, like, knockout of the year? Uh, the guy who took out Alistair Overeem? No, knockout of the year. Uh, I would definitely give that because that was just that was fucking a, he textbook like a and it was goddamn pretty. Pez dispenser. Yeah. Yeah. That was a badass You guys knockout. got the meme I said. But what about the, the knee? Yeah. What, about, what about Aljamine Sterling's knee to his face, though, yeah, right? Yeah, that was pretty good. Was they good. said he did the, the dab, right? <laughs> yeah, I, I There's a whole compilation dab. of fighters doing the dab when oh, they get what, knocked uh, out because they just, like, get knocked out. And like, what about What about when Diego Sanchez got turned off by the elbow? Yeah, that was pretty His good, too. His fucking power got shut down. He also lost to that one kid, right? Yes. It was like a couple weeks later for a charity fight? <laughs> oh. <laughs> that was an upset. That was a huge upset. That, put it, that actually made me like him for once. I've never liked Diego. <laughs> yeah, uh, apparently we Josh did, would we, don't even be part of this conversation. <laughs> Josh wouldn't be part of this conversation. It was very nice. It was, it was, it was, it was a great thing to do. It was a great thing to do. You went to school with that kid, didn't you, Josh? <laughs> Diego Sanchez? Smile. Smile. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty much it. <laughs> All right, One, last little bit. One last little bit of news here. Conor McGregor has not defended his belt in 412 days. <laughs> it's the Conor count. 412 days. By the way, the UFC has only stripped a current champion and and had an interim champion be uh, promoted to champion. How many times? Three times three in times. the UFC. Conor's already been Once, one of them. Twice. Three times. Yeah, the first time was uh, Frank Mir. Frank Mir was injured on a motorcycle. He was out for 419 days. A legitimate injury. When they made Al, uh, our Andre Olovsky become the uh, champion. Uh, the other one was uh, Hannah Morrell got promoted after Dominic Cruz was out for 828 days. With for multiple, multiple <laughs> legitimate injuries. From Ronda Rousey. <laughs> Conor McGregor was stripped of his featherweight belt. Uh, for at 350 days for not defending because he decided to move weights and he decided he was not going to defend that belt. They made uh, Jose Aldo the champion at that time. So this is the third time. Now, we're coming up real quick on that mirror deadline. Yep. 419 days mirror is when they strip right mirror the for not doing it. Now, if you're going to be Dana White, you're probably going to be like, well, he fought a boxer. So technically, he's been fighting. But he's, well, if he fought a boxer and you're going to count that, then he didn't defend. He lost. Again, you've already Take stripped it. him of one belt at 350 days. That's, and that's what's awesome. He can now become the first fighter to be stripped of two belts, oh, two belts. in the UFC. <laughs> he wanted to set another record. Going to go in the Hall of Shame. I mean, you, <laughs> this goes back and forth. I see this a lot online. This goes back and forth. Do you feel his legacy is tarnished if he never defends a belt? Absolutely. fucking lutely I mean, I, do you put in point, of course, all the, the Conor Nuthuggers, their biggest thing about it is as well, he took out Jose Aldo, who was undefeated for so long. Who hadn't fought in 600 and something In days. 18 seconds. Uh, he took out you know, a top five Dustin uh, Poirier with a knockout who had never okay. been knocked out in That's his career. Fine. He took out Eddie Alvarez, who was the champ at the time. George St. Pierre won 10 fights, defended his belt 10 times in a row, and then left for fucking four years, came back and beat the shit out of the current champ, and left again. Now we can <laughs> talk about that. That was pretty good, too. <laughs> So, I mean, do you th- do you, I said, do you feel that it tarnishes? Li- I, I feel like if you don't Absolutely. defend a belt. I already think he's a joke. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how much bigger of a joke you can get. And again, I, I love, like you said, like the nut huggers would be like, oh, he came in, he got paid, good. I mean, I'm glad he got money. I but, think I but would the not sport be as isn't, a, I mean, yeah. I mean, we're all we're all in this. We're not. We're not in this for money because we're not making any money. <laughs> but I mean, I get it. Everybody come out to fight. You, you're trying to make a living out of it. You're trying to make a living. But if you're going to say that his whole point, and if you don't think that he wasn't pushed by a bigger industry to help make money off of him, you're a fucking idiot too. <laughs> because right now, even when he made a hundred million dollars, other people made seven hundred and something million dollars right, off of right. him. I think I think if he were to drop the belt and just do money fights, I would have more respect for him. 
I still want him to defend. Period. No, even even if like if you know if he doesn't no. ever defend, fine, drop it. And if you go around and just jump around, almost like Roy Jones Jr. did back in the day, yeah, you start jumping around for money fights. I still yeah, want him. But to then you're John Cena. Time. You're Hulk Hogan. <laughs> just you know what I mean? One time. That's fine. You can be that too. Make money if you're all about making money. Yeah, but, you but go do that. But don't call yourself a don't don't take pictures with two belts and call yourself. You're just not. <laughs> and, and then have your people believe that and have them go into bars and get drunk and beat up because they're trying to defend you and your two belts. <laughs> they're trying to defend your belts yeah. for you because you're not defending them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I'm not saying I'm not going to kick your ass, but I feel bad <laughs> that you're defending your fucking Irishman. <laughs> you know? It's just horrible. So what's the over-under he gets stripped next year? I don't, well, once he comes up on the uh, the cruise deadline, then we'll have to talk about that. Eight hundred twenty eight days. Yeah. That's where you think that's it's going to be sometime in twenty nineteen. So, I don't know. What do you think? I try not to. It hurts my head. But <laughs> like I said, we're coming up I, on the mere they, deadline, which is four nineteen. They have to strip him by March. They have to. Nope. Do you think he's okay. going to fight Pacquiao by March? And then, he's, and then Dana does, saying that, that does, they hope to have him fight in the summer. That's if, what he's saying. If summertime. He's not, if they let him keep the belt until summer, because we know Ferguson's out for eight to nine months. That's what I was going to say. So do you think Ferguson will defend his belt before Connor does? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. One hundred percent. Yeah. And then at that point, because they tell us eight for Ferguson, I bet he's back in four or five. Yeah, if, if and if he defends his belt before Connor does, then he's just he's the champ. He's, he's the undisputed champ. champ. Period. And then maybe maybe that will add a fire to Connor's ass to make him actually come back and defend his belt. I think we'll he have, to he defend have to defend podcast of the year. Then strip him and give it to Ferguson. Before he says that. <laughs> McGregor has to defend his belt. We're gonna see what I said. We'll have to defend podcast of the year. <laughs> By the way, make sure you go and vote. Uh, uh, vote. Podcast of the year. <laughs> And yeah, thanks for listening. We appreciate it. It's uh, it's New Year's, so the next time we talk to you, it's going to be 2018, which is weird to say. Yeah, you're going to be doing a lot of this section. Be a little yeah. off. Yeah, yeah. That's an eight. That's an eight. <laughs> yep. Oh, and then uh, check. what? Most active fapper of the year? Uh, Eric Cowell, there hands down. <laughs> Definitely. You got it, buddy. It would be Terrell Powell, but I don't know if his hands can reach. <laughs> 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 Indoor speed champion? Is that... Still putting on a shirt, is he? Yeah. <laughs> Still. Yeah, there you go. Is Connor going to defend a belt before he puts his shirt, shirt on? <laughs> no. That's, that's, no, that's like a fucking what unstoppable force and immovable object right there. It's one of those things where that you compare those two, that's when the earth explodes. It's like when you tape the, tape the butter side up on the back of a cat and try to drop it and see which one it lands on. Free energy! <laughs> free energy. It's just gonna don't talk about like free portals. energy, bro. I don't need anybody in here shutting us down. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for listening. Of course, check if out. If you're still listening, they know about the butter and the cat. <laughs> <laughs> My MMA news. No, he said the butt end. <laughs> the butt end of a cat. Uh, they do this 24 seven. We do it once a week. So mymmanews.com. Follow them on Twitter and all that jazz. And also Dependable Solutions innovates your business. Check them out for uh, if you're doing credit cards in your business, you want a better deal. They can hook you up. Or if you're not doing it at all, they can definitely take care. They can of you. knock 40 to 60 percent off your credit card overhead, which is fantastic. Dependable Solutions. Check us out. Split Decision MMA.com. Split Decision MMA. MMA podcast on Facebook, SD underscore MMA on Twitter and Instagram. And of course, follow us on iHeartRadio. That's it from the SynCal Studios, Bueller, Dodge, and Dennis. Hey, use Uber, use AAA. Yeah. If use you're Lyft. wasted, don't get in a car. Oh, don't. That's don't, a terrible don't idea. Don't do it, man. Don't do that. And Gabby Garcia, unblock me on Twitter. Yeah. Have a happy <laughs> new year, y'all. Have a good night. We'll see you at the fights.